All right, welcome to Boom Beach Defiance Rebels. Plain Pants here, and I am loading up some cryoneers for the first time. And it's going to take a long time because they made the load time for each cryoneer eight minutes with a unit size of four, which is longer than heavies, which is six minutes. So, my advice, make the load time for cryoneers the same time as heavies, because they're the same unit size. They shouldn't take longer. I mean, the grenadiers do take 15 minutes, but they're six. So, I think eight minutes is a little excessive. But while we're waiting, we can have fun. Because I figured out that the label... The tagline for the Cryoneer changes every time, unlike the other ones. So there we've got Ice Ice Baby, Cool Party, Cool It Hot Stuff, Let It Snow, <laughs> Frost Bite Me. <laughs> that was a good one. I wonder if they had a contest at Supercell. Stay Frosty. Feeling Warm Punk. My game froze. That is a feeling I am familiar with. Cool it, Buster. Humble pie served cold. Winter is coming. That's a pretty good Game of Thrones reference. Man, I could do this all day. I'm a stone cold freezer. I don't really understand that one. Science is cool. Yeah, this is my favorite one. Don't need hot pants. I read that as plain. I think she's talking to me. I think she's talking to me. She's saying, she's not saying don't need hot pants to look cool. She's saying, hey, plain pants, you so cool. <laughs> now she's saying let it go. All right, fine, Cryoneer. Be that way. All right, so let's use these Cryoneers. This is my first battle with level one Cryoneers. And I gotta say, after checking them out, I think they may be legit. I was a little skeptical of sacrificing a boat worth of heavies for a boat worth of Cryoneers, but they did a really good job of protecting the Zookas. And I don't know how well they protect against the death of the heavies, but I gotta say, I think they did a really good job protecting the Zookas. Did I say? Yeah, I said Zookas. So I'm doing my huge, my huge stuff. Getting rid of shock launchers, prototype defenses, and rocket launchers before landing my troops. Let's get down to 1x here. Let's see these things in action. So I think the fact that they slow down the rate of attack really is to the benefit. From what I can tell, it's to the benefit of the Zookas more than anything. At least, you know, statistically speaking, when I look at the losses after the after this match, I feel like the big winners are the Zookas. And you'd think they'd help the the heavies since they're on the front line. But I don't know. I think it slows the splash damage down enough so that the Zookas never really take much heat. So that was, I gotta say, I'm, I'm surprised at how effective they are. So I'm gonna be a little afraid of these guys attacking my base, that's for sure. Here's another one. And uh, I sort of cherry picked here. This is two bases that were both upgrading a rocket launcher at the time. And, you know, 
there's something to be said for being choosy about the bases that you attack. This guy's got a level 2 laser beam, which has got to go. And it does. And what I instinctively did, and I don't know if you guys would do this too, is a slight delay before the landing of all my other troops and the landing of the freezers. Because I feel like they need protection. Now, maybe that's wrong. The other thing I was trying to do is trying to figure out because these, these guys, the, the uh, Cryoneers, they shoot in a straight line, which means the best way to use them is if you can kind of have them shooting either directly in a straight line of defenses or s sort of going diagonally to try to capture as much stuff as possible. It's kind of like a mobile laser beam that way. And, you know, laser beams, if they cut at a line of Zuka's sideways, is deadly. And I think the freezers are the same way. The more you can get them to kind of go at an angle, the better. And, uh, yeah, you see, you see the Zukas take heat during this attack, but they don't die. And I think that's because of the slower rate of attack that the splash damage has. I really... I'm really enjoying that. <laughs> Fantastic. Alright. So that was two more victory points. And then here's a computer base for good measure. And uh, I usually don't highlight my own attacks, but you know, it's Cryoneer Day. So you get to see how, I don't know, I think I might use the Cryoneers. I don't know if I'm going to use them long term. I think the jury's still out in my mind. But I definitely think they are useful. Whether or not they're appropriately powered or slightly overpowered remains to be seen because I haven't obviously upgraded them yet. So we'll see how the upgrade, how the upgrades go. But what I am most concerned about watching for is if they're sort of neutral. In other words, do you have any advantage of adding a boat of Cryoneers versus a boat of Heavies in a Heavy Zooka attack? I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. So let's go to the attack of the day now. We'll finish this off with the attack of the day. The attack of the day is sort of a wag of the finger more than a tip of the hat. It's to the first person to use the Cryoneer in the task force on a task force attack, which is my name is Ellipsis. But he gets a wag of the finger because the boat only has one freezer in it. Bad my name is dot dot dot. Bad my name is dot dot dot. Should never do that. Maybe you didn't have time to load the entire boat or maybe you had just done an attack and lost some troops and it was, you know, you just didn't have time to reload the boat, but if that's the case, I guess you're it's okay. But it's sort of an ignominious way to initiate the Cryoneer into the task force operations as the medics wait for death. Run! Run for your life! Oh. <laughs> Poor medic. Alright. Defiance Rebels, Plain Pants, Boom Beach, later.